David Clendon. <laughs> Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, Mr Speaker, as we heard just a few minutes ago from Materia Tude, the Greens are abstaining on this uh, legislation, and that's not a position we like to be in. We like to take a position to support or oppose. Whether we support or oppose legislation, we'd all agree most bills coming to this House are improved by um, appropriate process through the House and its processes. In this instance, the absent the abstention decision was a difficult one. We don't disagree with some of the fundamental principles of the bill. The minister in her introductory comments made the point that the, the matter of people, um, deportees arriving in New Zealand, people who have offended elsewhere, is not a new problem. She gave us a figure of typically 80 to 100 people historically who might be returning to New Zealand um, with the sort of history behind them. And she suggested Possibly we're looking at something like a threefold increase in that. From 80 to 100 to perhaps 250 to 300 people we can expect per year, at least in the short term. That is a real problem, um, acknowledging also that some of those people will not be offenders. They will be people deemed to be of bad character, but who don't have a, an offence, um, a criminal record. So the numbers aren't quite as severe as the Minister might at first uh, indicate. But we do accept that there is a, an issue, there is a problem here to be resolved. Some of the underpinning principles of the bill we have no problem with. The notion of endeavouring to align the treatment of returning people with those who have offended and had, um, have served some sentence in New Zealand and here. That's, that's not a bad principle, uh, uh, treating like situations alike. However, there is sufficient in this bill to concern us that we cannot support it, not least of all because essentially we have been flying blind on the Minister's intentions. We got a, a draft bill, a rough cut of the bill, less than a week ago, I think Thursday last week, we got to have a little look at what the Minister was intending. Um, we've heard already that even in a couple of days we were able to suggest positive and useful amendments to the bill, which will make it a somewhat a better bill. So it is an unfortunate um, reflection, I think, on this government that they seem not to have learned the lesson that engaging with stakeholders at an early stage in any policy development is likely to generate better policy and likely to capture support, to get support for a legislation if it is done in a timely fashion. Sir, we have heard various um, opinions about when this process began, when the problem was acknowledged. We know that at least from the beginning of this year, we knew there was a problem because the Minister and indeed others were hearing of the NGOs in Auckland who were endeavouring to offer some support to people who were landing at our airport with no support, no network, with a history of offending. Nothing was there for them. We have known this has been a problem for quite some time. In July of this year, I wrote to the Minister a letter I sent to her on July the 16th asking for a briefing, for a conversation about her, um, her intentions, about what the government was planning to do, about getting some sort of a regime in place to manage this very real and existing and even urgent problem. Uh, two weeks later, I got a two-line response thanking me for my inquiry and telling me the minister had no time to speak to us at that point. That is not indicative of good process. Wouldn't one think this, is under, this was always going to be an issue that would be controversial. It was always going to be a matter that involved human rights and we've seen now the Bora report that indicates yes there are real concerns about that. Wouldn't it simply be good practice to engage other parties fairly and reasonably to endeavour to build support and critically not only to engage us but to engage the public. So what does the RIS, which incidentally we got to see about an hour ago when it landed on the table, the regulatory impact statement, which gives a good overview of the policy advice the Minister has received, the analysis that's been done. What are we told in this document about consultation? Well, it's not a pretty sight, I have to say. Um, the there was consultation, targeted consultation with police and corrections, entirely appropriate. An early draft of the bill, I'm um, sorry, an early draft of the RIS, the policy advice, was circulated to police, corrections, Crown Law, PCO, uh, Ministry of Health, Department of Internal Affairs, MOBI, uh, NZ Customs, Foreign Affairs and Trade and the Treasury. 
Nowhere do we see any reference to one of the many um, NGOs who might have added value to this. So my time's now expired. I'll return to the point of the lack of consultation, um, which has been acknowledged in the documentation in a later contribution.